You want a poo poo? Ugh. Yuck, Devin. Ow. <gasps> I sh oh, hi. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Kristen here. I'm a licensed esthetician, a freelance makeup artist, a YouTuber, a mom. If this is your first time checking me out, welcome. So glad to have you. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I do videos from beauty to lifestyle to not entrepreneurship, especially if you're also an esthetician or a freelance makeup artist, or maybe you're somebody who's in beauty school or trying to figure out if you want to be an esthetician. My channel is going to be covering all those topics in my last couple videos. Have, have kind of been you know taking a little break from the business talk but now in this video I'm going to be revisiting you know what you should know before you open a salon suite and what it takes to be self-employed and what you need to know being self-employed. This actually is kind of turning into a little bit of a series because I just have so much information to share and I don't want to make a super super long video I'd rather kind of break it up into parts so that it's a little bit more uh, understandable and a little easier to to follow along this is actually gonna be part three of this little series that I've been doing in this video we're gonna be talking more about the financial piece of the business how you know I went about things financially when it came to you know opening up the studio loans things like that we're gonna get get into that topic we're also gonna talk about the business licensing and the permit side of things. So the difference between being a sole proprietor versus an LLC. I did want to touch on products and menu and pricing. That video I promise you is coming up really, really soon. So stay tuned for that because I definitely want to share with you guys how I came up with my menus and, and how I came up with the treatments that I'm offering. But that's a whole video in itself. I've been open for about a month now in my studio. If you guys haven't seen my Beauty Room from Scratch series, make sure you check that out. I also did a little esthetician room tour. Super, super detailed, especially for somebody who's interested in opening up your own space. I took a lot of time to, you know, make that video for you guys. So check it out if you haven't already. Without further ado, if this is something that is interesting to you, then make sure you continue watching. Alright, so a couple things before we get started. If you guys didn't notice in the beginning of the video, I was reading a book. So I wanted to share with you my current read. This is actually by the same author of the book that I mentioned in part two of this series. I talked about goal setting, I talked about getting in the entrepreneur mindset, which is super, super important when it comes to being self-employed or, you know, being a solo esthetician especially. It, you gotta get your mindset right. You know, we talked a lot about that. If you've already watched that video, go and re-watch it. Take some new notes. I feel like whenever I watch things more than once, I grab new information every time because you might pick up little nuggets that you didn't pick up last time. So I decided to revisit this book. It's something, it's a book that I've read before and this is like kind of a precursor to the You're a Badass at Making Money. So this one is called You're a Badass by Jen Sinero. Really good read. It's already, you know, I'm already picking up new things that I didn't pick up the last time I read it. And it's just, you know, in a different time of your life, you you just you you gravitate towards different pieces of information definitely a good read um, if you haven't you know started reading your about us and making money yet you could start with this one as well and then you know quick real quick shout out my sister-in-law she's a, a graphic designer tattoo artist and she made these really dope shirts so I'm rocking you know the mauve one and then she also I also ordered one in black and there's like olive green, there's gray, I think, you know, so go and you support her. I'm gonna link her information down below so you guys can rock one of these cute t-shirts. Side notes are over. But yeah, first and foremost, I am just so like blown away that my subscribers have been just growing like crazy. I just feel so honored and so just grateful for you guys you know you guys are subscribing to me you know if you're watching this for the first time you're not a subscriber yet make sure you hit that subscribe button I post new videos every Thursdays and Sundays right now you know I'm a mom so I, I've been really trying to like get a certain time that I'm doing it but you know it comes out when it comes out so make sure you turn on that notification button so you know exactly when I'm posting my videos but yeah I'm just so excited you guys I'm so excited to get to know you comment down below introduce yourself to me let me know, you know, what probed you to subscribe to me? You know, what are you hoping to get out of my channel? And where are you at in your aesthetic journey? I want to know so that I can make these videos a little bit more, you know, specific to you guys, to your questions. Uh, I apologize if I haven't responded to your comments just yet. 
I've been, you know, just so busy with the studio opening up. It's my, been my first month in business, and let me tell you guys, it's been wonderfully successful. And I promise you, if you guys follow what I'm telling you in these videos, you will have a super successful launch. You will have a super successful career as a solo esthetician and opening up your own aesthetic studio and being self-employed. And yeah, just I, I swear to you, if you follow what I'm telling you, because I'm literally living through it right now. I've, I've literally, I just did the numbers for my first month in business and I'm gonna make a separate video for you guys so that I can share with you what that number is and how I did that, how I achieved a very successful first month in business. And so make sure, you know, stay tuned for that. I just have a lot of great things coming your way. So if you're subscribed to me, you, you made the right choice. I'm gonna be sharing with you what I feel like other channels don't really talk about and what other estheticians are really afraid to share because I don't know, you know, I mentioned before, I feel like we're kind of in a weird time right now, you know, especially with COVID happening. Nobody gets as close with people as we do and what, what, what we do for our work. So we've been greatly affected by this. This pandemic has just been such a whirlwind and it's brought up a lot of, you know, just questions and uncertainty. Good job for watching this video and for wanting to get better and wanting to learn more because this is an opportunity for us to grow as an industry and to really take the reins as as an esthetician to, to provide for yourself, for your family. I'm a mom, comment down below if you're a mom too. It's it's a whole job in itself. Yeah, I, I just wanted to touch on that and, and just to let you know, you know, that stay positive, stay focused. You know, if you're in beauty school right now, that is the best place to be right now. Soak in all of that information. Talk to your teachers. Do as many facials as you can. Do as many makeup clients as you can right now. This is the time I feel like to really be working on your content. You know, work with people that are comfortable with, with coming, you know, and, and, and going on your table and being your model because this really is a time to build your content and build your presence on social media. And if you haven't started a YouTube yet, I highly encourage you to do that. Check out my video where I talked about why I think you should start a YouTube. It's just completely changed the game for me, for my business, and it's just a free marketing tool. You know, there's a lot of things you could be doing right now, even though, you know, we're, we're not really able to go and look for work right now. We're, we, we feel a little bit hesitant, you know, doing what we do. Devin just woke up. I hear him crying right now. Hold on. Let me see if I can put him down, and then I'll check back in. Are you? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this is my life, guys. You want poo poo? You want poo poo? Oh, big poo poo! Yikes! Ooh. He's just starting to transition to mainly solids, so his poops have been just gnarly lately. Ugh. After this though, you're going back down for a nap. That was like way too short. Normally, you guys, I don't normally film on, it's a Wednesday right now. I normally film on Tuesdays and I tried to film this video yesterday before I had my clients, but it was just, I had such a busy day yesterday and it was just super rushed. I didn't really like the vibe of that video. I don't like doing videos where I feel flustered and where I feel stressed because then it reads on camera and I look weird and I talk crazy, so. Yuck, Devin, ew. <gasps> I sh okay, hold on. Oh my goodness. Gross. This is funny, you, huh? Alright guys, let me finish cleaning up his diaper and I'll let I'll come back. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that guys. I put him back down for a nap. Let's hope he stays asleep. Um, seriously, hashtag mom life. Um, I have my laptop here by the way. I'm going to be using it to talk to you guys. Maybe that was a sign. I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent, but I wanted to address the whole COVID situation because I feel like I've been getting a lot of comments about that, a lot of questions. 
So anyways, yeah, just stay positive. Like I said, you know, really try to work on your content right now. If you're interested in doing that YouTube channel, launch, launch that thing right now. This is the time to do it. Let's dive into this content because I really, I, I want to be able to talk to you guys about the financial piece. And if you haven't already watched my budgeting and marketing video for my Beauty Room from Scratch series, I'll make sure I put it in the little tag right here so you guys know. Uh, what video kind of I'm bouncing off of as far as when we're talking about finances and and um, you know what you need to consider. I talked a lot about that in that video already, so check that out if you haven't. But we're gonna kind of revisit it in this video. I want to talk to you guys about what kind of like financial options are out there for you if you are looking to to open up your space. My suggestion and where I have gotten some funds from is SBA.gov. So that's the Small Business Administration, and through the stimulus bill that they passed you know, kind of toward the beginning of this whole pandemic, they made it a lot easier for small businesses to get loans. So go and check that out. I'm, I'm going to make sure I link down below all these different articles I'm going to be referring to and websites, but that's going to be a huge resource for you. They're doing really, really flexible lease terms, right? Or not lease, they're doing flexible terms for the loans right now up to 30 years to pay it off. You don't have to pay anything for up to a year. Super low interest rates. So I would say, you know, don't don't go crazy with it. You know, only take what you feel like you you need right now. And and once you come up with that budget, which is what I touched on in my other video, how to create that budget and what things to consider for your budget. You know, once you get that number, really try to stick with that because you know I'm not trying to encourage. All right, there's like hair in my face. Um, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to encourage you to take on more debt, but this is an investment. This is something that I feel like is going to be worth it to put money towards to get, you know, financial assistance with because I definitely didn't. I mean, I had a good chunk of money saved and I had somebody comment on my other video asking, you know, did I save up a lot? Did I have a large clientele? The, qu the answer is no. I didn't have, you know, a ton, a ton of money saved up. I had a good chunk that I'd been putting aside from my tax returns and you know, just getting that extra unemployment. I, I was really smart with it and I didn't go and I buy like a Louis V bag. I, I put it aside because I knew that opening up a space was what I really wanted to do. Be, be mindful, you know, don't just get, you know, cause they'll approve you for a certain amount. And if you can take less than that or that if they give you the perfect amount, then awesome. Um, but really be smart about it. You don't want to get yourself in any unnecessary debt, but it, it is going to take some investment to open up your space. Um, what other resources are there? Say, you know, SBA is, is one option. The other option could be going to a credit union. So credit unions are kind of like smaller banks, if you want to call them. They're usually in your, in your county, but they're a lot more open to giving loans. Um, and, and we're talking about personal loans. Credit unions tend to have a lot lower interest rates, a lot more, uh, you know, reasonable loan terms. And so I, you know, for example, if you were to get a personal loan from a credit union, you might get approved for an interest rate from four to five percent versus putting everything on your credit card. Typically, from what I've seen with credit cards, the interest rates can be from 25 to 28%. Can't speak for everybody's, but it's a lot higher. So you definitely don't want to be racking up your credit card. I do suggest if you are using credit card, use one that's going to have cash rewards. So like your bigger purchases that you know you can just immediately pay off. Go and, and swipe it on the credit card, get those reward points or monies and then pay it off as soon as possible. Just do your research, you know, don't go and apply for a bunch because you don't want to get a bunch of nicks on your credit credit report for running your credit. But, you know, look into it, talk to your representatives, ask them, hey, you know, this is my credit score. What would kind of be like a ballpark of what what my interest rates would be? What are your loan terms at this point? Yeah, just just talk to somebody. Don't don't go online and just start applying for a bunch of things. You know, this could kind of be last resort, but it's definitely a great option is to talk to close family and friends. Just see who is willing to support you, even if it's a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars, fifty dollars. Some of that can go toward your studio or your business and 
you know, and I would approach it if you're going to ask somebody for a large chunk of money that you know is, is a great investor and you know, you could pay them back and work something out with them. That's really flexible. Come to them with like a business plan, you know, lay it all out. Say, Hey, you know what? This is my plan. This is where I want to locate. This is how much revenue I plan on making, you know, with your goals list, go to them and be like, these are my goals. And, and this is why I think you should invest in me. That's always a great option. You know, you have, you have more of a network than you think. And, you know, I, I highly suggest tapping into that. All right, so let's get into licensings and permits. So I mentioned earlier in the introduction, we were gonna talk about the difference between a sole proprietor and an LLC. So I actually have a really good article at my laptop right here, and I'm going to link it down below, but basically it talks about uh, what things to consider and kind of the advantages and disadvantages of sole proprietorship versus LLC. And I personally, and I've heard and I've watched a handful of videos that are related to my videos, and I've seen a lot of people saying, hey, I think you should go get an LLC because it's gonna protect you legally. If anyone sues you, it would take your, your business assets, not your personal. You know, you have a separate tax ID number. So, and I'm not saying that those things aren't good. I'm just saying if you are somebody who is just starting out, especially if you're just operating in your home or you know, you're not making any significant income just yet, I would say you could get away with just being a sole proprietor for your first year, six months to a year in business. The reason why I say that is because there's so much more that goes into an LLC. It costs more money. Um, you know, there's an annual fee for it every year. Also, you know, you have to file different taxes for your industry. I, I'd have to look into see if there's any specific taxes for the beauty industry. But if you're an LLC, you're going to be treated like a business, you know, and and not that you don't want that, but if you're just operating yourself and you're just starting out, I don't think you need to go through all those loops and hoops to to start working. I think starting out as a sole proprietor is just going to be a lot more simple and less complicated because you know let's face it we're, we're I'm talking to you as if you're you don't have any employees just yet and if you're just operating in a little small space an aesthetic studio now if you're somebody who's going to be you know hiring people you know having a large facility with multiple treatment rooms if you're starting a product line if you know if you're really really at that point in your business then yeah you might want to look more into being an LLC and more established and and with an LLC, you know, like I said, you're just gonna have to worry about more, more paperwork and more forms that you need to apply for. So if you're an LLC, you're gonna have to get a uh, doing business as certificate. So, so if you're operating under a business name, you need to be, you know, uh, known to. You need to tell the government, hey, you know, I'm operating as Kristen Marie and Co. For example, if you want to know what your county, what your state requires, just simply Google your state plus. Um, self-employed licenses you know you'll find a bunch of articles I'm gonna link many down below for you the IRS actually has some good articles about what you need to do if you're self-employed I think for the sake of this series I'm suggesting that going forward as a sole proprietor is, is just fine as long as you're insured and I talk about that in my budgeting and marketing video but if you are a sole proprietor you're not gonna be able to go and apply for a business loan so that's the only, I guess, downside is that you're not recognized as a soul, as a business just yet. And so anything, any financial help you're gonna be getting is gonna be through your social security number. And yeah, your ass is gonna be on the line. So, um, but that's why, you know, it's super important when it comes to, you know, I mentioned this in my esthetician room tour, are the forms that I have people sign, you know, have them sign a COVID liability waiver, a consent form for the service, another form for you know their medical history skincare history so you know as long as you're really putting best practices out there then you know you really and you're insured then I really wouldn't say worry too much about you know somebody like going after your assets and you know like I said if you're being smart about your finance financial loans and you're paying things on time and all that then you don't have to worry about that so um, you know, that, and that, I'm speaking to you as if you're really going to take this seriously. So make sure you keep that in mind. If you are going to operate as a sole proprietor, that you need to be on top of it. That, that's kind of my personal opinion with it. 
And so as a sole proprietor, you do need to get a business license. So uh, basically it's a business tax that you pay to the city that you're operating in. They base it off of a bracket of you know where your income, estimated income is at. And then you do need an establishment license through the Board of Cosmetology and that's $50, not anything crazy. They do, you know, make, they have like a long checklist in their application of what you need in your room to be in compliance. And so, but yeah, that, that's really what you need as far as, as licenses and then permits. If you are planning on selling retail at your place, then you're, you're gonna need a seller's permit. Again, Google seller's permit and then put in your state or your county. And so you know specifically what it is for, for your state and where you're located. Um, but yeah, it was pretty easy. I did the process online in like the middle of the night and I was able to print out my seller's permit right on the spot. So um, it's just, you know, you don't need it to be able to sell things, but it's just to make yourself a little bit more legitimate. And basically what it does with certain skincare companies, I know with Image, one of the skincare lines that I'm using, I can file for a business account with them. And so I went from a 40% discount to a 50% discount and then they don't charge me sales tax. So that might sound wonderful, but that actually means that when, you, when you're not being charged sales tax, they're gonna be reporting the IRS, hey, you know, we sold Kristen $100 worth of product she needs to be taxed on that amount. So they're gonna end up taxing me for, you know, 9.5% of that $100. So make sure when you are selling your product, you're gonna be incorporating that sales tax into the, the final price. Keep that in mind. I do really believe that you can make a good amount of money off of retail. I just finally got some retail for my space because I didn't actually start out with any and I really regret that because I could have probably sold like four or five hundred dollars worth of product already in my first month but you know it is what it is and so that's why I'm sharing it with you so you guys know <laughs> what I kind of you know already regret doing but I just got some retail for my shelves and you know I had four clients yesterday and all four of them bought something so Definitely, you know, have retail available, get that seller's permit so it's just a little bit more legit and you know, the IRS isn't gonna come after you. All right, so I think he's doing okay. Let me check my monitor. <laughs> Yikes, he's awake. So, say hi to YouTube. Guess what, mommy's been getting so many more subscribers and probably because, not because of me, because of you. Yeah. He just got his couple of vaccinations a couple of days ago, so I'm thinking it might partially be because of that. He's also been teething like crazy, and he just turned one, and apparently everybody's telling me once they turn one, they start getting into their terrible ages. So he's just been, he's a good boy, don't get me wrong, but he's, he's definitely exercising his power of being able to Say no or, you know, bite me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I swear to you, you're something else. I love you. Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I really tried to be as detailed as I can. Again, I'm no... I'm no business expert. You're already doing your research watching this video and so props to you for, for you know, wanting to just learn more. The internet's a great resource. Just Google stuff, um, read different articles. Don't just watch YouTube videos. <laughs> Talk to other people that you know who are operating in business in your area. I'm sure they could have you know knowledge to share with you when it comes to opening up your own space. But that's just kind of been my experience and my my you know research that I've done. But yeah, you know, start small, and, and I encourage you to just exercise these disciplines, especially financially. You know, don't. Don't get yourself into any situation you're not ready for and watch that budget and marketing video I touched on, you know, like what you should be keeping in mind when it comes to taxes and all that. And I do plan on doing another video that's going to be talking more about, you know, how I'm keeping track of all that and that side of stuff, you know, all that fun stuff. Yeah. You excited? Yeah. Say hi. You saying hi? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Like this video, comment down below, say what's up, tell Devin what's up. And of course, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.